Hello everyone and welcome back to Stay Tonight. In this video of React JS season 2, we'll talk about a very important topic that you should definitely know if you're building on some application that you plan on deploying on production. Yes, as you must have already read in the title of this video, this video is about error boundaries and that is something that you should definitely have in your application if you plan on deploying your application on live production environment and make it available for the end users because having proper error boundary in your user interface and your application is like having a try catch in the user interface where you can handle error messages gracefully if any mistake or if any runtime error occurs in your application you can manage it properly prevent your application from crashing and hence provide a better user experience to the end user of your application just like try catch error boundary is not just you know a way to handle errors gracefully right that is one thing that it is solving second thing if i have to point it out is that you can log your errors as well so for example if you have created an application and some end users are using it and for some reason the application crashes that's a runtime error you might not get to know what error occurred what happened unless and until the user informs you that okay this is what is happening with your application please fix it the other thing that you can do is you can define error boundaries and in the error boundary have a proper logging mechanism using which you can log the error in a file along with the stack of the error maybe inside of a file on your server or maybe you know through an api call you can save it in your database and then have a proper reporting dashboard where you can see all those errors forward them to your developers and ask them to fix or if you're working on the project yourself then you know you get good enough information about the error what is happening why it is happening to fix the error right so that's a very important use case and that is something that you should definitely implement in your application now before we move ahead with writing code one thing that you should be clear about error boundary is that error boundary is not an error fixer it is a way to catch errors and you know have some user interface displayed instead of blank screen to provide a better user experience but it is not an error fixer you will still have to write good code error boundary is not an excuse to writing bad and poorly implemented code you should test your code properly this is just to handle one in a thousand chance where runtime error occurs and you don't want to show blank screen to your users you should have a proper full robust application so there you can have this implementation take care of those things and it will present a better a good ui whatever you know maybe some picture oops something went wrong some exclamation mark so that sort of user interface you can create and provide when something bad happens with your application and your application crashes so now let's see the code how you can implement this error boundary one of the simplest way of implementing error boundaries will cover in this video and after working with the code i'll share with you what are the pros and cons of implementing error boundaries yes there are some cons as well this is not all good having an error boundary is good in an application but yes you cannot just unnecessarily have an error boundary there are other ways to implement things as well so that is something that i will talk about towards the end of this video so watch this video till the end now let's see how you can implement it now error boundary implementation is available in react core as well but that is available as a class component implementation which is i think you know comes with its own uh, legacy code i can say because class components are sort of deprecated people are using in legacy code class components are being used but right now if you're using something if you're creating something new application it's always recommended go with function components that is what i've always talked about in the entire react js series that i've created if you want to learn react js check out my react js playlist this is season two there was a season one as well so go check out that as well so now if there is only class component implementation yes that there is only class component implementation in react js by default in terms of you know what the core library provides there is only class component implementation of error boundary but yes there is a separate implementation uh, that is available as an npm package react error boundary that you can use and implement error boundary in your code as a function component so that is what we will be using now how can we use that just go to google search for react error boundary and you will get to see this npm package as the first result this is the package that we will be using as you can see it's very popular 4.3 million downloads every week right so what you have to do is use the npm command to install this let's quickly install this i entered a wrong command but anyways it's working all right so this is installed let's just quickly fire up the server server is running this is the basic user interface that I've created. This is a basic product list sort of thing. Uh, using an API, I'm getting all the products in the product.js. I'm firing a API call and I'm getting the data from this particular API, creating a basic list of products using product card inside of product card. 
nothing but you know showing name and price so this is a very basic example and i have followed this products and product card and couple of other videos as well so if you have watched the videos for react routing how you can have params in react routing or let's say the cart one so you should be familiar with this particular example like i said there is nothing much a uh, products component is there in which data is getting loaded product card is just a card ui to show the product information app.js has the products component inside of it right now the four things that we want to talk about in this particular video is how you can have a setup for showing a common error message for all let's say a common error message would mean that if your any component fails any runtime error occurs there will be a common user interface that you would want to show for all the components then you can also have an implementation where you want to show custom error messages whatever error messages are produced as a result of the runtime error you can also display that on the user interface so we will see how we can do that if you want to log errors in a file or maybe you know uh, make an api call to store the errors in your database how you can do that reloading the page provide a button to the end user to reload the page and check if the application runs or not okay so if you get to this react error boundary documentation you will see the first thing and the most important thing is this error boundary component this error boundary component is a component using which you know you can enclose the entire application all the components and this will set as an error boundary so if i have to give you an example let's say you have your app.js file and in this particular app.js file you are loading two components let's say one is a component and one is a p component with this a component inside of this a component you have another component b then in this b you have another component c so this is one hierarchy of components in this p component you have another component which is q and then there is another component which is r okay so these are two flows of components a b c p q r if you want to create an error boundary a common error boundary for all of these what you can do is you can create the error boundary over here around the app.js then a and p are child of app and then b c are child of a q and r are child of p so everything will be enclosed by this particular error boundary if you want to have separate error boundary implementation then what you can do is you can have an error boundary over here around a e b 1 and another error boundary over here around p which is e b 2 now this eb2 will handle any runtime error occurring in r q and p and this one will handle errors from c b and a so that's the concept of error boundaries right so error boundary is a component it's more like context provider that we have we create a provider uh, component and inside of that we load everything so that this provider can provide the context in case of the context api in react js right if you have not watched that video you should definitely check that video out as well to learn about context api in react js so error boundary works that way right all you have to do is import error boundary and use this error boundary component around your application right and that will do it so let's quickly do this let's take this one from here import it over here have the error boundary and close the products inside of this error boundary and this error boundary will have one property fallback where you can show the message directly something went wrong okay ring wrong so let's see right now obviously everything is working fine so we won't be seeing that message so to break the user interface what i'll do is i'll just remove this part so because uh, an object can not directly be printed in jsx so it will give us an error now obviously you're seeing this error because this is an overlay that react creates in development mode in production mode you won't be seeing this if an error occurs you will be seeing blank screen and in this case this is what you will see a small message something went wrong now this is a basic paragraph that i've created you can create a very good looking user interface as well but even this message is good for the end user because instead of seeing a blank white screen the user is seeing that okay something went wrong there was some error and the application is malfunctioning so it's better this way at least the user gets to see something otherwise user will just you know keep on refreshing and would be thinking that you know maybe my internet is not working maybe some error is there but he or she won't be able to figure out what is happening so this message is a good thing okay now what else we can do is over here what we have is this is a simple paragraph tag that i've created instead i can have a component as well over here okay so i have a error handler component over here inside of which again i don't have much which simple message obviously you can customize and style it like you want what i have done is i've added two classes window center flex call this will make it appear in the center of the screen that's it so what i will do over here is i'll just simply have the 
error handler component in this fallback property instead you can do this also go back to the user interface you will see oops some error occurred over here all right so this is a common message that you will get whenever products or product card or anything any child component in this particular hierarchy will fail so show common error for all is done the second thing is show specific error message now over here what we are doing is we are showing a custom message we don't know this error handler component has no idea what error occurred so how that can be handled now that can be handled using another property which is fallback render so i will just remove this for now and this fallback render can take a function let's say show custom errors all right so this show custom errors let's just create this over here and this particular function can expect error and along with that a set reset boundary or reset boundary something let's go check out in the documentation fallback render prop right so this can expect okay error and reset error boundary reset error boundary is used to refresh or reload the page or you know resetting the error boundary trying to load the app again so we'll implement it in a different way we have to ignore this for now just error and destructured way and you can you know directly uh, show the error message so i'll just copy this return from over here let's just destructure this error and return this so what we are returning from this function is we are returning error dot message it's getting access to this error because we are calling this particular function using the fallback render property so this gets access to the error actual error that happened the runtime error that happened uh and you can display it like this we are displaying it obviously you should not do this which you should never show your error that you are getting but yeah in case you want to you can do it like this maybe you have a admin panel or you have a in your company some product that you are using internally then you know this error showing is fine so that it's easier to for you to debug right so if you want to show this error message you can do it like this using the fallback render property so this one is also done you can also rather than showing the message directly you can have some if else over here some conditional that okay if this error message is there then show this message etc right so based on different error messages you can show different user interface that is also something that you can implement using this one okay then comes log errors so let's just quickly move back to the fallback thing and have our error handler over here now there is another property on error using this property again we can create a custom function to get access to these errors and maybe you know log them into the database call some api send it post it to the server store it in the database create some report etc you get access to error and info now this error will give you the access to the error actual error and this info will give you access to the stack error stack so let's just quickly log them this will be in an object format so i'll just i'm using json dot stringify so that we can see whatever we are getting inside this info and let's head to this oops some error occurred inspect console and as you can see over here is error is you're getting the error objects are not valid blah 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 stack is you're getting the component stack and you can see where the message or where the error originated from product card etc so this is a very good way maybe you know uh, send uh, fire a fetch call send this error and info to the back end store it in a file or maybe store it in the database right so this way you can log the errors which is a very good and important thing and a must have thing that you should implement in your application now comes reload the page so how you can reload the page that we will do using a hook that is available in react error boundary so let's move on to the use error boundary hook yes so using the error boundary hook you can reset the boundary as well so in this error handler what we can do is i can call this use error boundary because this is the fallback this is being called when an error occurs right so inside of this we can handle i'm showing the oops some error occurred message i can also have a button added to it that okay if you want to you can try again too and you will see in this error over here you get a try again button as well reload refresh whatever and if you click on this the application again tries to reload itself so that's the fourth thing so in this particular video what we have covered up until now is we have covered how you can show a common error message uh, for all you can have a error handler component inside of which you can have a common error handling specific error messages using fallback render property you can do that right create a function which gets access to the error show the message error message or 
implement it however you want to log errors using the on error property you can again have provide a function log errors and you can log your errors and you can also use the use error boundary hook to provide a reloading button now these are very good four things that you should definitely have in your production ready application so that you know basic runtime error handling is done in a nice way in your application okay so that's about error boundaries now if we have to talk about some of the pros and cons now pros i've already mentioned in the beginning of this video that's you know gracefully handling the error having a fallback user interface to show when error occurs so that the user experience is not hampered by error and blank screens and you can also log the errors so that you can fix the error in your application now coming to the cons or the things that don't go in the favor of error boundary what are those things the first thing is that error boundaries cannot catch all the errors event handlers and asynchronous calls that are something that error boundary is unable to catch okay so that goes slips away so it's better to have a proper error handling for them inside of them only using try catch or whatever right then error boundary also brings in an extra overhead because it has to monitor all the component the complete tree structure for any runtime error so it's an overhead so make sure that this is something that is used in one out of thousand requests and you have proper error handling inside your components and you make sure that things are not left in the head of error boundary for everything right yes there can be one request in 1000 requests that is handled by error boundary misses your entire error handling code that you have written inside of your component and then in that case you know error boundary can help you out but but you should not rely on error boundary completely if not implemented properly this will also lead to you facing difficulties in debugging your code right because this will just on the release it will not show you proper uh, errors right so you have to have this log errors properly implemented so that you know whenever an error occurs you can either log it somewhere in the console or maybe you know in the database store something create a file so that you know that okay these are the errors that are occurring right you don't see anything in the screen which is a good thing but as a developer it would be a bad thing right so that's about it for this particular video we have talked about error boundary and this is something that you should definitely implement if you are creating a production ready application i cannot emphasize any more so try setting this up in your application if you face any issue you can obviously comment down below and we can discuss if you have some cool user interface that you have implemented as error boundary do share it with me also upload it on github and share it with me i would love to check it out right in the next video we'll talk about use reducer hook how you can use use reducer hook to manage complex state in your application how you can use use reducer with some complex form where the form is complete representation of a state so these two things we'll talk about then we'll move on to redux and then comes the video for authentication with react js which everyone is waiting for so this week is going to be fun do not miss to watch other videos i will try to upload three four videos in this particular video so stay tuned keep watching keep liking if you have not subscribed to the youtube channel please subscribe to the site right youtube channel see you in the next one